Hello, everybody. It's Manuel Mazzini speaking, and uh, I have a pleasure today to interview one of my great mentor. Uh, it's a great man, great chiropractor, uh, great leader in our profession. He helped my life personally and professionally, like anybody else. Please welcome Dr. Bob Hoffman. Thank you, Manuel. That was very kind of you. It's my pleasure to be on with you today. Bob, uh, I know that uh, you are uh, into this uh, new incredible uh, boot camp. It's called Transformation uh, Practice Pr Transformation Boot Camp. Can you please explain to all my friends and profession what it's all about? I'd be honored to. Manuel, I've been in chiropractic for 40 years, and it's very challenging to realize that worldwide we're still taking care of the same percentage of people. We haven't made very much progress in 40 years. Quite honestly, our profession has had the failure to adapt. We're still using case history questions from 60 and 70 years ago. We're still using business models that are old and outdated and inefficient. In fact, one of the things I hear most common when I travel around the world is my first few years in practice were amazing. The last few years have not been good at all. I don't think I've changed anything. Could you help me? And the reality of it is, is that people haven't changed. You know, in our own chiropractic philosophy, we talk about the fact that when we adapt, we're in a state of ease. When we fail to adapt, we're in a state of dis-ease. I think our profession worldwide is in a state of dis-ease, and it doesn't need to be that way. It's very easy to succeed in chiropractic. People are literally dying every day for our services, but they don't know it. And I think at the heart of all of this, Manuel, is our inability to communicate effectively. We keep saying the same story, using the same words, the same analogies, the same metaphors. We don't communicate that information with energy or certainty or passion. We do it almost robotically where we seem to just regurgitate all over the patient the same thing we said to the last patient. And people shake their head that they hear us, but they don't understand us. And at the heart and soul of communication is not what we say, it's what the other person hears. So I have been looking for, for many years, for a way to update, modernize, change, improve our story, our communication, so that lay people fully understand it, they get the significance of it, they see our services as a necessity and not as a luxury, and they they choose to commit to ongoing care. Great, I, I stand with this. Uh, I'm. I tend to to see to see. Uh, I, I practice in Milano in Italy. I have uh, a lot of colleagues, great colleagues, uh, with uh, with me. It's 25 years of practice, uh, and my colleagues uh, even more. But we, we tend to see always uh, like a race to get the miracle. I mean, I, I got rid of uh, 30 years of uh, headaches uh, in three treatments. Uh, I treated five disc herniation in five treatments. And uh, this is uh, what I was uh, doing before meeting you. And uh, basically what, what happens is that the people, uh, the patient, even if they get miracle results, uh, they just tend to forget you and uh, go away after uh, they got rid of the pain. True. But uh, I maybe you you talk with their wife uh, and uh, after all, and they are not here anymore because they died by an heart attack. And I felt like uh, uh, I didn't do the job with the with this patient. Maybe if I kept on uh, searching, what was. Uh, uh, the cause of these symptoms more and let and have him uh, coming back uh, more frequently. Maybe I've, I've saved the life. Well, I, I, I think you hit on a very, very important point in the, our conversation because I love that European chiropractors or chiropractors around the world are striving for miracles, but we have to define what the miracle is. Is the miracle having the person feel better? Or is the miracle having the person function better? 
there is a huge gap between feeling better and functioning better. And it's my experience when I deal with chiropractors around the world that their focus, in my opinion, has mistakenly been on the person feels better. Feeling better is just the first step on the ladder to healing. It isn't the last step. I guarantee you the, the vast majority of the patients who feel better after three or four or five or six visits, if we were to do blood work or take an, an MRI or do a heart rate variability study to look at their brain and their autonomic nervous system, there'd be significant dysfunctions or abnormalities still going on. And it's until we correct the functionality that miracle hasn't happened. You know, the first step has happened and then we abruptly end the relationship or the patient abruptly ends the relationship with us, but we've only partially served that patient. And this is a huge problem in our reputation in the world, the culture we've created, our own thought process, and it's hindered our growth it's hindered our practices and it's hindered our ability to really create miracles long term. I think functional neurology uh, is what we're talking. Uh, I think functional neurology, mm, even what using any kind of technique to 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 help a patient and treat the patient, uh, is uh, the thing that is uh, can unite uh, the profession worldwide. I totally agree with that. I totally agree. And you know what? This isn't new. This is just bringing back the past with new technology, new research, new tools. Because, you know, BJ Palmer talked about the safety pin cycle of brain cell to tissue cell. He invented the electroencephaloneuromintipograph to measure mental impulses and where they were being disrupted in the body. Ralph Stevenson, who wrote perhaps the single most important book in our profession in 1927, the chiropractic textbook, said that all disease begins in the brain. I mean, we've known about the neurological basis. We are a neuromusculoskeletal science. Neuro <laughs> comes first, right? So well, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I come from Latin. Um, you know, Italian is, uh, is coming from Latin. The Latin said, always said, mens sana in corpore sana. So they, they, they knew, the old ones knew. You bet, you bet. And yet we have deviated away from that as a profession. Some individuals have not, but most of us have deviated that we've become back doctors and sub orthopedic specialists. And we're trying to realign the spine and get rid of the abnormal curves and play the role of God mechanistically instead of our history and our heritage and what science is now proving to be right, which is a vitalistic approach of adjusting the brain to adjust the body instead of adjusting the bones within the body. Great. Thank you, Bob. Uh, I, last, the last question. Uh, economically, how is this bootcamp can, can, can help you economically? That's a great question. Well, first, just to give you a little bit of information, and there's obviously going to be a lot of email with free training videos. I, I created over an hour and a half of training videos absolutely for free because I know not everybody is going to purchase my program. Only the serious players, those that really want to succeed and really want to go through a transformation and to have the excitement and fun and fulfillment and practice again, will be purchasing the program. But in the program, I have 14 hours of video training. I have 28 hours of audio training. I have 30 contemporary articles that are just shocking about the role of the body to self heal and the role of stress and disease and um, how our brain functions. I have over 300 pages of articles, um, letters, surveys, forms to help you implement this in your practice. I even will do as part of the program three 30 minute coaching calls to help you implement to make sure that it's fail proof and easy to implement. But what's the end result is the answer to your question. I could pretty much guarantee you because 
you, as well as dozens and dozens of other chiropractors around the world, have been practicing in this brain-based chiropractic model, the way I'm teaching it, the way I've developed it, for the last two, three, four years with outstanding success, rapid growth. So here's what I've discovered. Consistently, doctors who are doing this, who have gone through this transformation, far more new patients, far better conversion which means the new patient chooses care instead of not coming back. Much better compliance where people choose to come back for long term because they see that frequency over time is the healing formula to retrain the brain, to create new synapses, to reduce and neutralize their stress so that they're not in sympathetic overload where they're just spilling cortisol and other hormones and bathing in that corrosive substance. Um, we find that the doctor's clinical results are faster, longer lasting, and again, we get to that miracle point that functionality is back to normal, back to perfect, back to balance. But in addition, the doctor's um, finances and prosperity skyrocket, not because that's what this is about, but that's a beautiful consequence or side effect of taking care of more people, getting better results, enhancing your reputation, enhancing um, people's respect for what you do. Um, and even more important than that, I, I find that doctors' level of happiness, fulfillment go through the roof. They just, they're doing great work. They're consistently getting great results. There's very little stress in practice and they're just thriving and flourishing. And I know that any doctor, I don't care where they graduated, I don't care how young or old they are, I don't care what techniques they use, if they could implement more of the communication and the new model I created, the new case history questions, the new exam procedures with some adjusting protocols and a shift in the business model, I'm just telling you that practice is just going to thrive and flourish big time. And that's what I want for our profession. After 40 years, I want to get rid of the frustration of not seeing the profession make a change or grow and having this failure to adapt. I'm telling you that if doctors buy into this system and start to utilize this system, the profession will grow because more and more doctors will grow, will enhance our reputation, enhance the respect people have for us, and they will see our services as a necessity and not as a luxury. Great. I cannot thank you enough. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bob Hoffman. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Manuel. Greatly appreciate you. Love you, my friend. Again, I hope doctors that you're communicating with will check out those three free training videos and then consider, you know, getting into this system and letting me help them create the practice of their life. I hope so, too. Ciao. Right. Ciao.